Good day and welcome to SEO Bricks Insight. We talk about what's really going on in the world of the Bricks. Now today I want to talk about something that the West misses and doesn't report. This happened again at the Bricks Summit in Kazan. Now many people in the Western media missed this crucial intervention by Vladimir Putin at the Kazan Summit. Now it happened during a roundtable discussion on the general topic on the threat and new crisis and the stability of Bricks. Now, Vladimir Putin suggested that the organisation should consider countering the practice of engaging in geopolitical competition through the use of the climate agenda. So listen on and you'll find out that Vladimir Putin's a green energy sceptic. And not only that, he's very well informed and intelligent about it. If only the other heads of government were as clever, but after all, they're still globalist puppets. Now, in the context of the summit, which is focused on economic and trade issues, the Russian president's uh, proposal initially seemed to be out of context. However, upon further examination, it becomes clear it was actually a valuable insight and contribution to the discussion. I mean, he brought to an insight to a significant geopolitical reality that many people perceive incorrectly due to the influence of aggressive propaganda. Now, every person on the planet, if they have access to the internet via even a mobile phone, is exposed to the destructive environmental agenda on a daily basis with emotional language applied to each aspect of the discourse. The necessity to save the planet from pollution and protect the environment for future generations is now widely ex accepted, despite the evidence being lacking. However, there's a growing concern that the pursuit of these goals may inadvertently result in the utilisation of the most polluting technology and the marginalisation of those who challenge the status quo. Now, before I continue, I'd like to make an appeal. If you like and enjoy my videos, you can help me fund the channel and my website, seobricksinsight.com. Now, you can do this by making a small donation, which you can do by clicking on the thanks button at the bottom of the video screen on the right hand side. Now, everybody who does donate gets a personal thank you from me, and I'm thanking you all just for watching because every view is important. Now, it's likely that the majority of people around the world are available the, of the environmental benefits of renewable energy sources and the perceived shortcomings of traditional energy sources. Now, these products are environmentally friendly, safe and don't contribute to carbon emissions. Now, that's bullshit. Now, this message is repeatedly conveyed with the implication that the swiftest transition to new energy models is the most progressive and beneficial for the planet. However, according to Putin, the issue is the assumption is incorrect, and he's absolutely correct, and potentially damaging. He says, modern alternative technology and energy sources, including wind, solar, and geothermal power plants, have not yet re re reached the same level of efficiency, operational flexibility, service life, or environmental impact as their thermal and nuclear counterparts. And he's talking about fossil fuels and nuclear there, by the way. In terms of generating efficiency, even the most advanced solar panels and wind turbines are not as efficient as coal and fuel oil thermal power plants. Now, it's worth noting that wood pellet stations are also included in the category of green energy sources, despite the fact that they utilise a similar process to that of coal-fired power stations, and the waste from sawmills is compressed and burned and is actually more damaging for the environment. I mean, the result in carbon dioxide emissions that frequently exceed the levels produced by less environmentally friendly uh, energy sources like coal and um, which is why in the UK they're banning wood stoves. I mean, the viability of wind and solar is contingent upon substantial financial subsidies from both the state and traditional industrial enterprises. Now, these subsidies were often in the form of environmental fees that is essential for the continued operation of these projects. And without these subsidies, the projects just wouldn't be viable. Now, let's consider the hypothetical scenario in which a state operating in a vacuum decides to reorganise its energy sector and abruptly abandon its traditional sources in the context of environmental protection. Now, only a few countries have fully mastered the production cycle for renewable energy sources. 
which means that the majority will have to buy these same wind turbines and panels in large quantities, just like they do from China. Plus, the allocation of vast areas for land for the placement will have a negative impact on the real sector, like agriculture, of their economy. In this context of renewables, there's no place for complex chemical production, metallurgy, glass blowing, or other activities that are energy intensive. Then there's no market for these products, and secondly, those new sources are not capable of physically ensuring an uninterrupted supply to major consumers. And there's not a single steel mill in the world where an arc furnace could be powered by a wind turbines or solar panels. Now let's consider a developing country, which implies a gradual expansion of all of those. I mean, the global community immediately pressures the country in question and begins to accuse it of bloodthirstiness, callousness and unwillingness to reduce its emissions for the sake of future generations. Now they say that you should close that facility, reject these projects and invest in alternative sources and they're ready to provide loans for the purpose. However, that nasty economy is reluctant to comply with the externally exposed agenda but it's continually subjected to mounting pressure from all sides, particularly the Western sources, and it's perceived as non-alignment with their interests. Now, I'd like to add one further point. The application of climate levers in the context of modern geopolitics is actually at odds with the overarching principles of global development. Now, these key points were developed and unanimously adopted at the US Assembly in 2015. And it says, it's imperative that we make every effort to eliminate poverty and hunger. Now, point seven, affordable and most importantly, accessible energy. The eighth point is decent work and economic growth. Now, the ninth point is encouraging industrialization and innovation in global economies. Now, it's notable that the fight against climate change is only listed as the ninth priority, despite its so-called importance. Now, let's consider the facts. Now, it's considered that one in eight people globally live below the poverty line, and at least one third of them are children, but it's probably higher given the birth rate in the South and particularly Africa. Now, over a 1 billion people lack consistent access to electricity, while 2 billion are without proper sanitation and access to clean drinking water. Now, despite the global application of highly effective technologies for land reclamation, water purification and electricity generation, the introduction of carbon-free schemes are only beneficial as an auxiliary part of a modern economy. The scaling up of these schemes has to be uh, has the potential to nullify the hopes of job creation and economic growth. They're not going to work in the, the global south. I mean, firstly, green energy requires a minimal level of people, which could limit the potential for job creation. Secondly, the exclusion of continuous cycle uh, energy production hinders the economy and financial growth. You can't produce electricity when the wind doesn't blow and the sun doesn't shine, do you? It's unnecessary to even consider the potential for industrialization. The forced green uh, transition will inevitably result in the close of the paper and pulp mills, coke plants, gas processing plants, chemical facilities, and they'll have a insignificant industrial uh, scan on, on your country. Putin's Remarks, wherefore, were well thought out, and as often the case, they were ignored by the Western media. So, just keeping you well informed, thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe, and if you'd like to share this video with your friends, and if you've enjoyed it, help me fund the channel, click on the thanks button. Don't forget the comments, and I'll see you all again soon.